much to digest throughout the day. So uh, it's really a, right now a completely open just session digesting on the day. And we have some questions that we can ask. I will draw them as we move, as we progress. But I would just like to hear some thoughts. The first session was a diagnostic session. I would like maybe to ask a couple of the mentors who, were, who came here last year. So maybe Sahara, uh, Will, Ronaldo, just to give us, and Karim, is Karim still here? Yeah. Just give us like how you felt the difference between last year and this year, and some of the things and the trends that you noticed or some of the insights. Hello. Um, I didn't uh, get to meet everybody, so I'm sorry I didn't meet some of you. Uh, maybe if there's time afterwards, I'd like to meet everybody. Anyway, um, I think the big difference for me was uh, with the mentors being able to ask the questions in the first session, it was um, very helpful to be able to get the information we needed in a much shorter time frame. I felt that I was able to be a lot more productive uh, sooner because I didn't have to wait for the entrepreneur to try and guess what I wanted to hear. I could ask this, you know, the specific questions to get the answers. So I, mean, I felt I was you know, more effective uh, by being able to sort of you know, drive the questioning and to absorb you know, the business. And it's always you know, strange when you have 10 minutes because you're trying to understand so much about you know, what the industry is, what the product is, what stage the business is at, you know, what the entrepreneur's challenges are. Um, and it's, it's often helpful to be able to drive that question. Um, so I felt the first session that was a big change. I don't know what if you felt any... Uh... In general, hi everybody. Um, in general, there were four teams that I met uh, a year ago or so. Um, and every single one of them had made massive moves forward. Um, some it's basic things, like last year they had an idea, this year they've incorporated the entire staff. And others uh, raised uh, rounds of funding, others have gotten the market, uh, hit break even, some are profitable. Uh, and probably two of them made pretty drastic pivots, uh, which I thought was pretty impressive uh, in a short amount of time. Um, all of them are going through the basic uh, you know, constraints of scaling, uh, trying to recruit, trying to build a good team, trying to keep everybody excited. Uh, but overall, it's been really impressive. What were some of the common issues that you saw and some of the common um, a lot of times, um, I found myself, uh, especially in the, we did a, a business to business sales session, I found uh, myself trying to really encourage them to think horizontally, like what are the complementary industries to their right and left of their business. A lot of times, they hadn't really thought about uh, the other businesses and how they would complement someone else's business or vice versa, how they could work together and network. Um, and also found myself encouraging them to go further up the value chain and not necessarily letting the technology be the only thing that wins over the deal, but maybe a service that they bolt onto it or uh, a relationship or a focus on the industry. The concerns are always uh, uh, scaling. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of times today is how do we how do we charge more or how do we figure out what to charge or who our exact client is. Um, we had one session where we had to really force somebody and say, who's your target audience? They really couldn't say who the target audience was. It's like everybody in the world. Not really. So, you know, I think it's still having to be objective and not lying to yourself. Really cool. So, so keep being yourself objective. Ronnie, how do you find that the change from last year? What are some of the common issues and common advice? So, um, I think it was actually really great. Uh, last year I thought we were not as focused. So, I didn't have the first session. But in the second session, everyone kind of knew what they wanted. The common theme, I think, that has occurred this year in many business with the companies and the rest of it is about how to build a team. And I wasn't sure if it's the inability to find funding or is the inability to find people. And I think uh, it would be great to, going forward, if you have the funding, like say, if we can't find a person, but how do we go by getting them? Or no, we do not have the funding, we need to have the incentivize the team to come in and rotate and then you have to be upside. I think I felt that was a common thing to almost everyone. It's just a natural progression as the business has scaled, finding the 
co-founder, it's easier when you have more than one my zero, so common thing that all investors are asking for more than one percent. Uh, I was not as lucky to finish it. Uh, I started with one I think I definitely advise that more people on the farm. Guys, uh, from the from the entrepreneur side, I uh, just want to hear volunteers to take the mic and tell us some of the advice that they heard that they think is has been spot on or, or maybe not, but some 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 insight that they can share with others. Just want to volunteer. The other one as well, so you can think of it as uh, hello. Uh, this year, uh, let me first speak about the difference between the last year and this year. Uh, this year, the most important thing that happened today is that uh, most of the mentorship was uh, targeted to exactly what we do. Uh, we started with uh, identifying the challenges that we have, then the mentors start to speak about each challenge uh, for each specific business. Uh, the last year, it was a little bit. Uh, we will speak about different topics. Sometimes it hit what you are interested to hear, sometimes not. But this year it was uh, more focused on what we already need to ask about and what we really need to advise. Uh, so it was um, more interesting than the last year. Uh, basically, uh, the most important advice that I have today is that we should focus. Uh, I don't want to go into details of the case of my business. But generally, uh, and I guess most of the entrepreneurs here receive the same uh, advice that you should focus on the problem. How many companies should focus? I guess everyone. <laughs> How many entrepreneurs heard a mentor telling them focus? Focus on problem. 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 Focus uh, I guess it's important, I guess I learned my lesson this time. Maybe I will take uh, hard decisions in the next two months or the next two months. Uh, I hope it works. Thank you. Great. Anyone else? Come on, let's share. That's, that's any advice that we got, good or bad or whatever it is, let's share. It's uh, something related to the focus. Uh, I noticed that uh, myself some of the colleagues in the uh, mainly asking uh, the mentors that we are wanting to expand to other markets, other regions, and the main uh, thing is focus on the market that you are currently in, and when you build enough traction in the STEM market, then you can think about expanding to other country or world. Any tips about uh, fundraising that you got? Any insights share? Mainly, if you think you have a challenge to reach some kind of market, uh, what I got here today is that sometimes this market you need to validate if this market is helpful for you or not. So, for example, if you want to expand to a different country or something, maybe you need to do their research of if it's very good for you to expand to this country or not, or for considering it as a challenge. Yes, I are you ready for that or not? Anybody is much more. Anyone else? Any insights? Yeah, this is related to VC investment. If you want to get uh, easier VC investment, make your business as building block. This building block is going to cost you X and it's going to get you Y revenue. So that would make the mission of the VC easier and will make your mission easier as well. Who's looking to fundraise in the next six months? Who's looking to fundraise more than 50k? More than 500k? More than a million? Yeah, dollars. One million? One million? <laughs> <laughs> um, from the mentors who are still in the room, Amar and Amar, I'd like to also hear Kareem and Mehmadi. Some some of the thoughts on on, on fundraising or just in, in general? In general, like some of the insights, some of the, some of the things you let's call it reverse mentoring. So you're the mentor, 
entrepreneurs that you say that he says something like, wow, they do something great. And then you get him so something you learned today from what entrepreneurs are doing, how they set their money their challenges, and maybe some of the insights and advice you get back on. You know, I think if you look at a market like Egypt, you know, they have 40, close to 40 million people online, and, and uh, there's a lot of problems in Egypt. But on the, on the flip side, where you have a lot of problems, you have a lot of opportunity to actually solve these problems. So um, I think the ecosystem is ready. Uh, the only thing that is missing is, I think, this fundraising. The fact that you don't have many pockets to actually tap into uh, puts the VC firm into a position where they know they have more supply. So they know if you leave their office, you're going to come back to them in two weeks. And so in Silicon Valley, you get out of their office and you have a hot deal, you can sign a letter to them a few hours later. So, um, it is a challenge that I think a lot of um, the, uh, the, the startups face in Egypt and it impacts everything, whether it's, uh, I was talking to one mentor, uh, you know, uh, and he was talking, you know, one company said, you know, probably because I'm you know, self-funding the company, so definitely has to be more cautious about the working capital for him. It's not just about burn rate, it's actually about survival. And others, you know, want more people, but they can't recruit people because they can't afford them. So, uh, you know, I guess going back to the challenge of you know, you know, having access to capital, I think it's uh, it's clear that uh, you know entrepreneurs need to kind of you know, get a bit creative and maybe not pursue VC firms, maybe pursue something like you know, Aramex did, you know, corporate entrepreneurship uh, program where they can go to someone in their vertical. Uh, if you're doing something in, in grocery store, then go talk to many people. Maybe mentor with investing in like this because they know the business, they know where the business is going, and you might want to actually enter that. So I think uh, something interesting it was more of a, uh, an epiphany hearing back from, uh, from some of the guys presenting today was that uh, I guess typically uh, we look at things that sometimes with a little bit too much of a focus in defining who the target demographic is. Um, I think it's, uh, it's sometimes good to take a step back and say that, you know, let's let the consumer decide, if you will. I mean, uh, sometimes it's very simple to say, okay, well, I was looking for uh, demographic within this location, within this age, within this, uh, this gender, but uh, sometimes it's good to kind of take a step back, put the playground, and look for people that are online within this region, and we're going to kind of let their lifestyle and personalization attributes kind of define it, and from that we're able to pivot our, our business model. So it's, uh, it's kind of an interesting thing that kind of gets the feedback on, on, uh, on the other side of the line. Some questions. Yeah. Uh, uh, I have an advice for being 
maybe I don't have this uh, long experience in fundraising. We started this only one year ago. Uh, sometimes we we neglect that, uh, or we have to go to someone who is an angel investor badge on his suit. It's not always this way. Maybe sometimes we can get a, a good investment and a good experience in what you are doing by going to the people who are already in businesses that are close to your business, even if they are not angel investors by their donation. Yeah. Not exactly corporate. Sometimes it's, it's a businessman who is, who is not even very big or, or have a lot of money to invest. Uh, it's not about just money, it's about money and, and experience, experience and connection. So maybe sometimes you should go first and see the people who are doing things similar to what you do. Maybe it's, it can be a very good uh, step to start with. Alright, so some of the questions are put in the box. First question is to Calvin Chin. What is that that you wear in your right hand? <laughs> this, is one more. this is one of four wearable devices I have on me right now. This one's called Miss and Shine. It's an XLR on her and The other three you haven't asked me. That answers your question, I've asked it. Uh, another question. Uh, how do I know how much of my product to give away for free to get customers? My co-founder won't take very What do I do now? Mentors, Salah, Roni, Will. First of all, there's a great podcast on this subject. Um, come and see me afterwards, whoever we'll asked the question. Uh, it's on my, it's on my iPad on YouTube. Um, these guys debate the idea of freemium and you know the, the economics behind the pricing of you know, such services. Um, there's the feature gating, which is basically you you create a free version of the product um, and you strip it down so you don't offer all the features. Um, that seems to work with some products. Um, there's a lot of research online. Uh, I give a lot more information about you know the product and you know exactly what you're trying to do to give you a detailed answer. Uh, but it is very well documented online, so please do. Come and see me afterwards, I'll, I'll point you in the right direction. The other part of the question was, my co-founder won't take the lead. What do I do now? So whoever asks the question, then please not see my type of co-founder. Yeah, um, I mean, you know, do you both have a shared vision of where you want to be? Um, and are you currently on the right path? I assume you're not, which is why you're proposing that you give some of your products away for free. Um, and I can understand the other co-founder saying, but if we give it, if we start to give it away for free, how do we monetize it? Look, I think you know, growth and uh, continuing to learn from customers and getting traction is very, very important. But at the same time, it's a business. Um, so you both need to come together and just say, where do we want to be? Um, if we want, you know, ten customers before the end of the year, that's a very different place to if you want to have another thousand customers. Um, so, you know, alignment on goals is something that you should do with your co-founder quite regularly and just check in and sort of say, hey, you know, what's our focus for the next three months? What are the milestones that, you know, you know, that we should be achieving? Once you have that sort of, those goals mapped out, then I think the questions answer themselves. I'd also add that, that you should start with a real deep reflection on what it is you're getting with those free. The free users aren't customers, and that they don't bring revenue, but there are other benefits, depending on what your product is. Maybe they add more value to the network and to the use of the product by other paid customers. But if it's you know, um, just about a vanity metric that you want to show to investors, or you want to feel good about your product being more hands, then I, you know, I would caution against giving it away. So you know, to your point, you know, um, maybe you're learning about customer needs, there's lots of benefits you can articulate specifically what they are and maybe put a dollar figure into the value, then you can figure out how many should be giving away. Tony, you have a comment? No, on, on the two things actually, the product container and the co-founder. Sorry. I think, uh, just to get back to the point, uh, you need to build a network and you got to figure out if you're going to give something free, it's the one that grows your network. So just put that and say, how do I grow my network? What is the number one, number one or two things that inhibit me from growing my network? Which could be the user, if it's a marketplace, people coming to the site and just 
give something one side of the tree that really helps you to scale your network. In terms of uh, not seeing eye to eye with your co-founder early, I mean, my take is just cut it loose early. It's just, if you have a disagreement this early, you're not seeing that you can lead the fate. I think it, as the business become more complex, unfortunately those problems from my experience don't go away. And if your style of working is already being challenged, I think imagine when you have more people, it's hard. The other way you can do it is just make sure if you still want to coexist, make sure each one really understands what area you know, they will focus on. But I think that in the beginning, if you have a rough relationship, it might be easier just to just agree on one of them. Whoever believes in business, it's important. So another question is, uh, you mentioned that you have a lot of people in the business. How do you measure the return on every dollar of marketing that you pay? that you pay for it. What's the formula? And turns to one side, what's big? So, so this is a great question. It's, it's very complicated because obviously the impact of your marketing doesn't um, exist in a vacuum. So how do you isolate the effect of marketing versus you know, seasonality, versus your overall growth, versus other exogenous factors? I'd say the key to that is going to be benchmarking your own marketing spend and seeing progress. And so as you vary marketing spend, then you can see, um, hopefully, like against all the other things that you can't control, um, the effect of the marketing spend. It, it, it's, it's a great question because it's so difficult. And I think... Um, yeah, I think, uh, you know, obviously you need to be able to track, um, you know, cohorts as they come in and be able to look at uh, you know, how much money you spent acquiring them. Um, you know, finding out you know, what's organic and what is, sort of as Calvin said, it's very difficult. But you also need to you know, sort of be able to track your know, lifetime value. And um, that's gonna, you know, knowing these things and you know, understanding you know, what triggers uh, sort of, know, a customer to become an actual buyer, um, in an e-commerce scenario, for example, how you activate that, um, and then knowing what the lifetime value possibility is, and then how do you, you know, continue to drive engagement and retention, um, you know, all those things, you know, you need to have the basics in place to be able to track that. Um, there's a lot to it, um, again, it's, it's well documented online, um, but just make sure that your LTV is as high as possible, and your acquisition cost is as low as possible, um, if you get that right. Uh, I'd like to uh, uh, get back to Ronnie as well on how, how they look at Sukhothis, if you can share some of the insights, but also when, because you do a lot of performance uh, marketing. Yeah, I mean, I think both of the, uh, the previous uh, comments were spot on. Seasonality is actually something that everybody overlooks, uh, especially in uh, e commerce as well, but like in the travel market, like a lot of performance marketing. I think the biggest thing you need to realize is obviously your target market, you know, the, the acquiring cost of that, and something that a lot of people overlook is how, how do you actually, what's the mousetrap, right? What is the, the mechanic that allows you to acquire? Sometimes it's not a billboard, uh, it's not a purchase. You might not actually have any acquisition of that. It might be a loyalty scheme, it might be uh, a referral scheme. package where you're, they're buying multiple things at once in order to actually be able to acquire uh, your, your ideal uh, client or customer. So try to, you know, bake all those things into it. I would definitely say test. Um, and I would definitely say try to find, if you're online, try to find uh, offline comparisons and do research into an offline comparison and see how they track it or see what they're looking for or see how they're benchmarking and then see what, what type of value add you can do online to be able to say, ah, oh, okay, well that person's going to be in this sort of form if they're doing this sort of research in the store and things like that. Okay, I uh, also add another question to that, because that's another relevant question. And do customer acquisition strategies need to involve paid marketing? So obviously that's a deeper problem. I think uh, the first thing is to make sure you build your own benchmarks, I think, if you look into it. You cannot go into a marketing process uh, without having built your own benchmarks so you understand exactly 
where you're spending on and just what's the impact of the spend. Second, I, you have to do the easy things. We were talking earlier, like if you need to get the email, make sure that that email pop-up is right there. Just do the basics. I think so many people just start marketing about the basics. One of the interesting metrics that I started looking at very recently is how much of the money you spent on your existing users. So while you think you're marketing to acquire users, actually you're spending them on your existing users. And I think that is something you would want to corner out and figure out how to optimize as you go, not to spend as much on your existing users and use your own internal tools to, to, to contact these users. I think sometimes when you do a lot of online marketing activities, uh, now Facebook allows you to exclude your own customers, but that's not all better than that. I think it's something, because you have such a need, so we end up spending maybe X amount of your marketing spend on customers you already have acquired, and you're just retargeting them, but you're paid. So that's something to look for. As you scale, that is the same. So I think we invested a lot in the numbers, in the analytic tools. Uh, we don't use GA, for example, which is everyone uses. It's really primitive for removing the spend. And things like that, that just, you gotta make sure you see the visibility of your numbers. And if you're not comfortable, you should just, that's the biggest fight between IT and marketing, to make sure they have really marketing tools. So we almost have internally the person just developing tools for the marketing tools versus the end customer, because that just reduces the cost of acquisition and allows you to play and be tweaked and also be dynamic. So how, we never really thought about that. We needed to work with just the tools for the market use. So it was kind of by product of our development of spending, how important it is to optimize. I think that, that in my mind makes a great example, a very good point of maybe trying to talk to you and Sumrad and other in the space to try to come up with kind of as much as we can by just of what's the best the best practices and the startups can apply. So I actually will give back what we need to do for that. Um, yeah. Someone asked a question about, uh, can you get away without you know, paid marketing? Um, I remember on one of the sessions you know, today, I was talking to someone saying that, you know, uh, where you spend your marketing dollars doesn't have to be, um, you know, Google, Facebook, or something like that. Um, you can often spend that, spend those dollars on content or product that's going to drive acquisition, that's going to drive you, you know, to make a purchase. And I gave the example of, um, when I signed a deal with Ferrari World um, in Abu Dhabi, and um, that was the best marketing campaign we ever did because the product, you know, sold sold itself. And by getting that, you know, that product onto the website, um, we were sort of incentivizing lower down the funnel. So it was, you know, money very, very well spent. So don't just think you have to spend, you know, money on Google or Facebook. You can actually spend money on product um, or content. Uh, okay, so I think uh, we're ready to are we ready to sell it? Are we ready to give the prizes? Cool. Before we get to that, uh, a number of entrepreneurs in this room have gotten an email from Faris uh, for our focus groups. Are, are we in the room? No? Yeah. So we need also about three or four more volunteers entrepreneurs, so uh, we have two or three. So one guy is building a new project uh, that uh, we have we're not yet really ready to talk about too much in public, but we've picked a, a focus group uh, to be part of that, and we're looking for four volunteers to join as well. So as, after we pray, uh, if you can go to Faris and Samuel, and we'll uh, convene after that, and tell you more about it and get your thoughts on that. So uh, before, uh, so we're going to get a gift from Baidu, but, we, but also there's one thing that I mentioned in the morning, which is the Silicon Valley job. So again, so much that have happened today and so much that happened last year, and hopefully you'll be able to connect with many of the mentors offline and take your own, take your own connections uh, moving forward. Uh, and we can help as well, so if you need to connect with a different mentor, any tips of uh, insights, do, do reach out to us. So in the next two weeks, we'll send you an email that will describe what the award the, the, are, uh, the, the, the rules of the game. Again, to summarize it, it's a video, a very simple video, that you will take to shoot yourself or your, or your team, talking about the advice you learned, 
how you apply it in your company, and the impact that it did to your company. You don't have to do it in two weeks, actually, the results will come at the end of the year. So you can take two or three months in applying it, so you really can have something meet. And the winner, between the, the five mix and mentors between the, the various cities, as judged by the mentors, will win a trip to Silicon Valley with a full program there that's, that's managed by Google. So, let's email you about that, you can start thinking about that and start seeing how you can, uh, you can, uh, you can be good about it. Now we can get to the other search engine. <laughs> Did anyone not put their name? Anyone put their name in? Alright, so who's going to draw? No, I'm not going to draw. We have to find a lady to draw. We only have one minute to draw.